So one of the absolute keys to being able to finish your PhD faster, write more papers for better journals, isn't really better writing, isn't academic writing skills. You know, the real key to success in academia, but also in other areas of your life, whatever you want to become great at, is focus. And I've talked on this channel about this idea a lot, but in this video, I want to talk about hyperfocus. And in this book that has really inspired me and has really given me great ideas on how I can focus better. And I want to share those ideas with you as well, because really, you know, the success that you achieve in, in life, in academia, in, in anything here, be it personally or professionally, is directly proportional to how much focused attention you pay to this task. And the idea is very, very simple. So if you, if you think about you know, your energy and your time as, as finite, and our energy as human beings is finite, and our time on this planet is finite as well. So if you, if you draw that out as a circle, and then you know from that circle, if you draw out arrows into different directions, each arrow representing one task that you're trying to, to do and focus on uh, for extended periods of time, then you know, the more tasks you have, the shorter the arrows will be, right? So you basically have a lot of arrows going out of that, that circle of attention, but they will all be short because, you know, you can only use all that energy for 10 different tasks, meaning that, you know, each task will only get 10% of all that energy. On the other hand, if you were to focus all that energy and all that time just on one specific thing, then you know you would just have one arrow that going out of, of that circle of attention and that arrow will be 10 times longer than any of those arrows so it's the same as think of this as an analogy between the sun you know which rays are shining in all directions and they you know they heat up our planet nicely but nothing spectacular happens really right but if you put a magnifying glass right and you point it at a piece of paper because you focus all those rays of energy on one specific spot you can burn that piece of paper very very quickly and the same thing is going to happen in here so that's why focus and hyper focus as chris bailey calls it in here is so so important for your success writing papers or for your success in life in general so without further ado let's look at you know how you can achieve more focus so that you can write more papers for better journals in the coming years now if you're new here my name is Marek Kiczkovic and I run Academic English Now where we help PhD students and researchers to publish more papers in Q1 Scopus index journals so before we talk about kind of what, what is focus and how to achieve it and its importance for writing papers or writing a PhD thesis, I think it's really important to dispel the myth of multitasking. And this is exactly what Chris Bailey does in this fantastic book, um, Hyper Focus. So, you know, think of your attention as a circle, okay? And, and that attention span that you've got um, in each given day is finite. And it's a, it's a finite circle that you've got. So the more stuff you put in that circle, the more cluttered that attention span becomes and that the less attention you've got to focus on, you know, your specific task that is actually important, right? So, you know, what you can multitask is with habitual tasks. In other words, what we can do, what we can put in that attentional space, we, we can have a an important task that we're doing, let's say writing. And then for example, we can at the same time be listening to some music, okay? We can be walking and chewing the gum. But what is really difficult to do is to, to do two tasks that require attention, you know? What, what will happen basically is that switching between those two tasks that require attention, they will leave uh, attentional residue. Think of it as, as rubbish, okay? So if you were to, to first of all be reading papers and then immediately switch to writing papers, then 
that attention from reading will still be there. That residue, that rubbish will still be in our attentional circle. And it won't be that easy to focus on the writing because you'll be constantly drawn back uh, through that residue to your previous task. So multitasking doesn't work. Multitasking is a myth. Of course, you can walk and chew gum, as I said. You can read a paper and listen to, to music, um, especially if it's some quiet instrumental music, maybe binaural beats. But you can't be reading a paper, talking to someone, and paying attention to something else at the same time. You can't be writing a paper and reading something else and talking to somebody at the same time, right? And that attentional residue is, is very important because research shows that, you know, it, it takes about 20 minutes to get rid of that attentional rubbish from our attentional circle before you can fully 100% focus back on your task. So think how bad, how distractful really, you know, those distractions are to your focus because if you're writing a paper and somebody comes into your office talking to you, even if you know you you just talk for one minute, it's going to take you approximately 20 minutes to gain back full focus on your writing. Okay, so that's why you know really in order to achieve hyper focus, we need to get rid of distraction. I'm going to talk about that in a second. You know, to to summarize this point, you can. Think of your productivity or your ability to focus on something on a, on a graph, right? So if we, if we grow, draw a graph where on the, um, on the vertical axis, you're going to have your productivity, right? And on the horizontal axis, you're going to have the number of tasks that you're focusing on. Then, you know, it will basically be a bell curve that, you know, past two tasks, basically, you know, past really one task that requires our attention, our ability to perform that task drops drastically. So it's, it's basically a, a bell curve like this. And that's why it's really important to, to try to get rid of distractions, right? So the, the key takeaway with, with hyper-focus is to, rather than fight distractions, is to minimize distractions. So what, what you want to do is, first of all, identify everything that distracts you. This can be your surroundings, this can be things on your computer, this can be things, you know, um, at home, um, on your mobile phone, this can be people, this can be like anything, but you wanna make a list of everything that distracts you from being focused. And then you want to see how many of those you can potentially eliminate, right? And, and that should be the first thing that you're doing. I know that it's really hard to eliminate those things because you know we feel attached to them so you might feel like yeah facebook is really distracting but i cannot delete it from my phone because i need to keep in touch with my friends well you can you can delete it it just takes one click of a button to delete it it's just that you feel very attached to it right and also you've got to think if whenever you have resistance to kind of eliminating distractions sit down and think for a minute imagine yourself when when you are 80 Okay, well, what are you going to regret more if you ask yourself who is 80 right now? Are you going to regret that you did not spend more time on Facebook or Instagram? Or are you going to regret that you haven't written more papers, for example, right? Of course, you're going to regret the latter, not the, not the former, right? Nobody who's 80 is going to tell us, yeah, man, I really regret not spending additional 10 hours on Instagram right? But people do regret not spending more time with friends, for example, or, you know, not doing meaningful, productive work that makes them happy, right? So, you know, there will be resistance to eliminating tasks, but you want to make a list and eliminate all those things that distract you, right? And try to set up your environment in a way that it promotes focus. So, for example, I'm now, when I'm recording these videos, I go to a co-working space in our building and there is nobody here and on top of that you can reserve this space as well so that nobody comes in right and I don't have any of my kind of distractions that things that might distract me at home you know so I come here and I work and 
you know, the environment is set up for focus. So I don't have to fight really hard to focus. Focus comes naturally because you're in an environment that promotes that focus. So that's the whole idea, you know. The fewer distractions you will have, the more focus you will become naturally. Whereas if you try really hard to, and if you fight distractions, you will always lose. And the thing about attention as well, uh, that Chris Bailey talks about it, is of course that attention and focus are finite. And with every decision that you make in a day, you know, that attention becomes depleted and depleted and depleted. So, you know, remember a time where, for example, you didn't sleep very well at night and you were tired. Or think to, you know, to an evening after a really difficult day at work where you had to work really, really hard. Well, what happens on days like that? Well, you can't really focus very well, right? You feel tired, your brain feels tired because you had to make a lot of decisions and you're not rested anymore. So that's why, you know, the fewer decisions you make and the fewer kind of distractions you have to fight, the fresher your brain will be and the more attention you can pay and the less distracted you will get. Now, if you do want, you know, more personalized help with getting focused, with managing your time so that you can write more papers for better journals or write an excellent PhD thesis, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with us. The link to do that is right below this video. We'll get on a one-to-one -one call with you and identify, you know, the root cause of your challenges, really get clear on your goals, and then we'll also present a personalized plan for you that will help you to get to those goals faster. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.